Yo, what is up? Joshua Casper here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to kind of make this instrument rack here. It's just a small instrument rack. It's got the operator inside it set to, uh, it's just the preset, the default operator, which is a sine, simple sine oscillator, and it's just a sub bass. You can use it as a sub bass. So I've got some MIDI notes in here down in the zero range on the keyboard. And um, if I play this, this is a very clean sub. So if you don't have nice monitors, maybe put on your headphones so you can hear uh, what we got here. Okay, so it's just a very clean sub. Now, uh, that's a very nice for a good set of speakers. Um, you know, if you're or in your headphones, but if you've got like a laptop or if you've got some crappy headphones like those ones that come with the iPhone I think those are pretty crappy at least last I checked um, you won't be able to hear that bass in through those headphones or those laptop speakers so it's a good idea to either put um, another oscillator use another oscillator and use like a saw and just kinda add a little bit to it or we can use the saturator which is what I'm going to show you how to do today and I've set it up so you can add a bit of distortion to the sine wave which will you can make a really not nasty raspy sound or you can add just a tad so when it's playing through some laptop speakers it will uh, you'll be able to hear it so what I'm going to do is um, we're going to map some things to this macro knob and then we label it something like distortion so let's just listen to what we got here So obviously if it's up all the way it's a it's a bunch of distortion and it really changes the sound but if you just add just a little bit um it kind of boosts the volume and it also adds those frequencies that can be heard through um a lesser quality set of speakers or headphones. So let's just go ahead and make this real quick and it's super easy. Um we'll just come into the instruments, we'll drop operator on here. We're just going to leave it on the default. That's that really clean sub. And then we're going to come into uh, audio effects and drop the saturator on here. And open it up just because I like it when it's big. And we can turn the color off, which is going to get rid of all of these um, sort of parameters here. We don't need to use any of those. We're just going to use the regular one. And instead of an analog clip, we're going to turn it on a soft sign. And then what we're going to do is we're going to map three parameters to some macro knobs. So what I have to do is um, select both of those, right click and hit group or control G. And open up the macros and I can minimize the operator because I only need to see uh, these two devices here. And I'm going to map the uh, on off. I'm going to map the drive to the macro one as well and the output to the macro one as well. All three of them to the same macro knob. Now if you look here, uh, nothing is working the way we need it to. About midway through the device comes on and as I turn the drive up, the output goes up. But what I want to do is, if it's all the way down, I want the device to be off. And when it comes on, I want it, the drive to be at zero and then slowly increase. But as I crank it up really high, I want the output to come down a little bit so I don't blow my speakers. So the way we do that is we come into the map mode. And on uh, the device on, I come in and one zero, which is a trick. So now if it's at zero, you'll see that it, the device is not on. But as soon as I come up, it comes on. That's great. Uh, the drive, like I said, I want it to start at zero, and I want it to go up, but I only want to go up to about 28, because I don't want to get too crazy with uh, the distortion there. And then on the output, I want to right-click and invert range, and then bring the output to about negative six, right around there. So now, uh, if I come out of here, as you can see, when I pull up the drive, first of all, the device comes on after zero. And as I come up on the drive, the output will slowly begin to come down. So when I'm totally cranked up, it's a negative six, and that will keep the volume from uh, going crazy and blowing your speakers. So uh, that's pretty much the device. If we go ahead and listen now. I 
just love doing that wub, wub, wub. But anyway, that's uh, how you add a little bit of distortion to the uh, sub bass of your dubstep tune. And um, at zero, and just right around like 19, 20. That's, that's enough to give it um, a little bit of character in those smaller speakers, but you know, right around 36 is still a nice sounding sub without too many frequencies that are going to get in the way of your, your mid-level bass and stuff like that. But that, that's all going to come into play with some EQing later on. But uh, I just wanted to show you that little quick tip uh, using operator and the saturator and then mapping those three parameters to this one macro knob. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I'm going to throw the device up online so you can go download it up on the new blog. So go check it out and tell your friends. We'll see you next time. Peace.